when things go south in the stock market, this is how it happens. You have a drop and it just drops like crazy. So this is why personally, I don't suffer drops like this. I get my profit in, I get out to get very little loss. I just pull the money and then I can get back into it if I find that it recovers quite well. Because what can happen is that it starts dropping one day, then another day, another day, another day, and then it just continues like that. Let's look at buying opportunities in the stock market. The Tesla is up uh, $1.01. Closed at 194.77. Post market, we seem to be down further 34 cents. So let's look at what we have here on our chart. We came outside of our congestion zone. This was our buy impulse. This one was not the best because we had a little bit of a move down yesterday. But today we see that this seems to have been recovered because we are just above 194.35. You know, I would not precipitate to go back in right away. I myself am out of Tesla so far. If we take a look at the one hour chart, uh, we see in detail what happened. We had a move down yesterday and then we were stuck into this. So Tesla started a bearish channel, but we still have some nice support right here. Today we have confirmed this downward resistance right here. Because at 9.30 today, we tried to break it. We could not, and we caved on to that resistance. But now we have broken it. But because of this minus 38 cents, this remains to be seen what is going to happen tomorrow. It's possible that we just continue and caving into this bearish channel right here. Just be careful about that. We don't have stochastic over 60 right here. So things are still a, a little bit iffy with what happened in the market. In terms of indicators, we don't have stochastic over 60 on the daily chart and it's not even close. So it's not like it was on February 15. Uh, this one is not even close yet. We only have the MACD breakover bullish. So this is still nice, but this is not very clear. This is not very clear exactly what is going to happen yet. So to stay, in my opinion, it is better to stay on the, on the side. There's always time to come back. Let's take a look at the VIX. So VIX is uh, still climbing higher and higher. Yes, the close is lower today than it was uh, yesterday. But, uh, you know, if we look at the overall candle, we made a higher high, we made a higher low. So we are still on this bullish trend. So this is not good news. When we have a bullish VIX, we have broken 1485 that I was mentioning would be a problem. So we have broken it. So just be careful because of this. U.S. bonds are climbing higher and higher. It wants to break 4.32. You know, it has been trying for a week, trying, 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 trying. And we are being stopped right here. And at the same time, we are making higher lows. So, you know, we should be at some point breaking this horizontal resistance. U.S. dollar going down a little bit, losing stochastic over 60. So... A dollar should be starting to plunge. So that would be a good news for the stock market. Let's now take a look at the stock indices. Dow Jones still into its bullish trend, a very shallow bullish trend. We are still maintaining ourselves. And we see some signs of weakness because we are getting outside of the support, but we are brought back in. So, you know, it's not too bad. And we closed with a green candle. So far, so good for Dow Jones. SPX, uh, SPX is going sideways, a little bit of a weakening on stochastic, but as long as we hold 49.26, so we cannot complain too much. NASDAQ, uh, weakening a little bit, losing stochastic, but as long as we maintain 16.965, this is going to be okay. If we go lower, it's a sell. Let's take a look at our EV stocks. So BYD. Still making higher lows, but cannot break 24.48. When we break it with stochastic over 60, this is going to be a buy. Revian just going sideways. Xpeng, see again how important those downward resistances are. We come here, we cannot break it. We try again and we cannot break it. These lines are important. Neo. Just going sideways, I would not do anything before 628 with, of course, stochastic. Let's look at our Magnificent 7. 
We had a support at 180.24. That was used in the past. It was used January 5th to January 17. It was used as a resistance right here. I don't see the date. September 11, blah, blah, blah. So this was an important support and resistance. And now we seem to be bouncing a little bit on it. So maybe Apple is going to recover a little bit. So maybe we are going to be able to get back into it soon. We don't have Stochastic over 60 yet. So I am expecting a move. I don't know where, but I am expecting a move like this. And then after the second bounce, maybe Stochastic is going to be recovered over 60. Amazon going sideways. Google is recovering short term. Without Stochastic over 60, I, I have a hard time believing it. So we still have a downward channel right here. Just be careful because you see this green candle. It does not mean that this is great. It could very well do something like this. So just, just be careful about that. Meta going sideways. Microsoft also in its congestion zone. NVIDIA had its release their earning numbers. Let's take a look at this. So NVIDIA's gaming segment gets a power boost. The chips company segment, 2.9 billion in revenue, flat from the prior quarter, okay? And 50% from a year earlier. That's pretty nice. Uh, they seem to have had a decent, a decent quarter. So if we are basing everything on the post-market, the post-market is bringing us back into the congestion zone right here. So from a technical perspective, we still don't have the buy that we would have gotten by breaking 746.34. Maybe this is going to be different tomorrow morning. Our post market is a little bit higher, six bucks. So getting us back also into the congestion zone. So people were basically waiting for the earnings of NVIDIA to get a sense of how the tech stocks were going. And because of the nice results on NVIDIA, seems like this is helping Arn. Palantir, outside of its congestion zone, this one is falling. We still have Stochastic though, so this is quite strange that we have such a big fall. Post market, we are up by one buck, so this would bring us back into the congestion zone. So what seemed to have happened yesterday is just a little bit of a fluke because of the Fed minutes that came out and also because of NVIDIA's earnings. So things were a little bit iffy, but maybe things are going to start recovering for the rest of the week. AMD at the bottom of its congestion zone, no stochastic, so uh, this one. This one could have gone a little bit lower, but now post market, uh, we are up 4%. So we seem to be recovering. Gold going sideways, uh, silver basically going sideways. Bitcoin also a little bit of a congestion zone right there. Ripple also going sideways, broke support. But this is just Kindle. Let's wait for a second one. Neo battery material, it's basically going sideways. You know, I'd like it to go higher. We have a little bit of a higher low right here, but now we are just outside of it. And Nouveau Mon Graphite, this one is holding pretty good. So we are down 19 cents, came as low as 251, but uh, you know, bouncing on it and not too bad. So this is nice to see. And Novonix cannot break 231. So basically, there was a scare in the stock market this week. Everything pretty much plunged. This looks like it wants to recover a little bit, so that's fine. You know, I need to tell you that when things go south in the stock market, this is how it happens. You have a drop and it just drops like crazy. So this is why, personally, I don't suffer drops like this. I get my profit in, I get out to get very little loss. I just pull the money and then I can get back into it if I find that it recovers quite well. Because what can happen is that it starts dropping one day, then another day, another day, another day, and then it just continues like that. So this is why I never want to suffer things like that. 
when things have been going up, you know, it has been going up and then it stabilizes. You know, this was a small stabilization as soon as we drop support. I just pull and then if it comes back into it and continues, then I can get back in. But when I pull, I don't suffer things like this. And this is what really hurting us. So we need to accumulate money and not just buy and hold. So with the information that we have right now, it seems like things want to recover pretty good for tomorrow. We'll see. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. If you like what I do, you can become a YouTube member. Click on my trading view affiliate link. I'm going to wish you a great evening. We are going to talk tomorrow and I'm going to tell you how to push it.